This is a radio rendition of A Christmas Carol, brought to you in part by the broadcasting program at Conestoga College. Molly was dead, to begin with. There's no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Molly was as dead as a doornail. Scrooge knew he was dead. Of course he did. Scrooge and Molly were partners for, I don't know how many years. Ah, but he was tight-fisted. Hand at the grindstone was Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. And once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house, a grim, cheerless place if ever there was one. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who in a cold and dismal little cell beyond worked at One, his ledgers. Two, <laughs> Merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. <laughs> twenty-three, twenty-six, twenty-nine, nine carry two. <laughs> Christmas Day, seventeen, thirteen, seventeen, seven. Bob Cratchit. Uh, Yes, Mr. Scrooge. Stop that infernal caterwauling. Yes, sir. Nine, fifteen, seventeen. Singing the idiotic Christmas carols at my very door. Go on, get away from my door. Go somewhere else and bellow your blasted carols, or I'll give you. Why, Governor? It's an old custom at Christmas time, you know. Yes, and I don't want any of your old customs. Take your fellow fools and go away! Christmas! Blah. Right, sir. Merry Christmas anyway, sir. Blah. Now, you get that letter from Higgins and Blackthorn, Cratchit, and then I want you to finish posting this ledger. And then after that, you can pop over to Parthagill's and tell Ethram Parthagill you've come after the 17 shillings and 6 pence he's owed me since Michaelums. And tell him I shall have a constable over there if he doesn't pay up at once. Mr. Pothergill's wife has been ill, sir. Oh, what do I care about his wife? I want my seventeen and six. I, I just thought it being Christmas, sir. Christmas? Christmas. You mention that word once more to me, Bob Cratchit, and I'll... Hey, you there. Bob Cratchit, what are you doing there? I'm only putting a bit more coal in the fire, Mr. Scrooge, seeing it's so cold in there, sir. You put that coal back into the scuttle. A fire? A fire indeed. I can tell you, if you use coal at that rate, you and I will soon be parting company, Bob Cratchit. You understand that? There's many a young fella like your situation, you know. I'm sorry, sir. My fingers were getting a little stiff with the cold. Then put on your mittens. There's someone at the door. Go on. See who it is. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I should like to see the head of the firm, if I may. Oh, very good, sir. What is it? A gentleman to see you, Mr. Scrooge. Huh? Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Marley's been dead these seven years tonight. I'm Scrooge. Well now, Mr. Scrooge, at this season of the year, it's only fitting that we who are more fortunate should raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. You may not believe it, sir, but many thousands are now in want of common necessities. <sighs> and hundreds of thousands are in want of the simplest comforts. <sighs> are there no prisons? Well, there are plenty of prisons, sir. And the workhouses? They're still in operation, I trust. I wish I could say they are not, but they are, sir. The treadmill and the poor law are full vigor, then? Both very busy, sir. Ah, I'm glad to hear that. Ha, I was afraid from what you said at first that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. No, sir. All these institutions that you mention are flourishing. But it's nevertheless true that some additional provision for the poor and the destitute must be made. 
But a few of us pawn change are endeavoring to raise such a fund, you see. And uh, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Oh, I see. You wish to be anonymous, sir? I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas time, and I can't afford to help make a lot of idle people merry. I help to support the establishments and not take care of the poor. They cost enough. Let those who are badly off go there. Many can't go there, sir, and many would rather die. Then my advice to them is to do so and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I've only your word that this is true. It's the truth, Mr. Scrooge. Well, so be it then. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, sir. I quite understand, Mr. Scrooge. Good afternoon. Cratchit, show this gentleman out. Yes, sir. This way, sir. Please. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. <sighs> Cratchit, close the door. Yes, sir. Twenty-four, thirty-one, one carry three. A new scarlet tippet for Tiny Tim. A comb for Martha. Thirty-three, three carry three. A hair ribbon for Belinda. Four, seven, twelve, fifteen. Cratchit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I suppose you'll want the entire Christmas day away from this establishment. If it's quite convenient, sir. That's not convenient, and it's not fair either. But I suppose I can't do anything about it. It's only once a year, sir. Only once a year? Once a year indeed. A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose there's no good talking. You must have the whole day. Well, see that you're here all the earlier the next morning. You understand? Oh, I, I will, sir. I will indeed. Good night, sir, and Merry Christmas. Bah! <laughs> 